Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to our monthly webinar. The title of today's webinar is Improving Children's Health Across North Carolina, a Collaborative Approach. My name is Peter Cribb and I'm the National CATCH Program Director at the CATCH Global Foundation. Before we get started, I'd like to take care of a little housekeeping. First of all, our webinar today is being recorded and an archive will be ma made available on the catchinfo.org website, along with a PDF of the presentation slides. During today's webinar, we encourage you to ask questions via the control panel on the side of your screen. You can type in your questions at any time, but to keep us on schedule, we will try to hold off on answering them until the Q&A portion at the end of the presentation. When typing your questions into the chat box, be sure to select the option to send your message to all attendees. Next, I would like to let you know a little about the Michael and Susan Dell Center for Healthy Living. We are an international leader in conducting research and providing programs that promote healthy living for children, their families and communities. Our work fosters health behaviors among youth influences policy and environmental change to support healthy living and advances professional education and community service. You can find out more about the centre and its work in school health on their website, www.msdcentre.org. It is now my pleasure to introduce our special guest for today's webinar, Richard Rary. Rich Rary is the director of Be Active Kids, a signature program of Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina Foundation. He received both his BS and MS from West Virginia University in physical education, teacher education. Rich has spent over 12 years teaching in the area of physical education and motor development at both the public school and college levels. Prior to serving as the director of Be Active Kids, Rich served as the program director for Be Active North Carolina, a statewide nonprofit organization committed to empowering North Carolinians to live healthy, physically active lives. Today, Rich is going to discuss the Be Active Kids program and how Catch and Be Active Kids have coordinated to bring sun beatables to North Carolina. Good morning, Rich, and welcome. Good morning, Peter. Thanks for the great introduction. Uh, next slide. Uh, I always like to start with with something maybe a little uh, less um, intense, so something a little more enjoyable. So this is one of the slides we use a lot because we've noticed a change, a change in parenting, a change in childhood experiences, uh, and a change in kind of the amount of time children are spending outside. So, you know, the, the comic reads, this is called the outdoors. Oh, I've seen this uh, level on my video game, says the child to his mother. So as, as you begin to hear a little bit more about the active kids, what we're doing, and how we got connected with uh, the Catch Global Foundation and MD Anderson uh, Cancer Center, this slide kind of will set as um, the framework of why we thought this way and why we decided to make some connections and where we were going with those connections. Next slide. Uh, as Peter said, um, the Active Kids is an award-winning signature program of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield North Carolina Foundation, uh, and the foundation sits under the Blue Cross and Blue Shield North Carolina Corporation, which is a health insurance individual health insurance company. So. You know, people are always like, how can we get this in our, you know, Blue Cross in our state? Um, what most people don't know is um, all Blue Cross are independent, so there's very little connection between the Blue Crosses across our country. Um, the Active Kids was started in 1999 uh, as a partnership between a public funder um, um, or public entity, which was the North Carolina Physical Activity and Nutrition Branch under the Division of um, Health. Um, and basically, they started 
working with Cooperative Extension, who then started working with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. So we had a nice private and public partnership then to create a program. And at first the program was thought to be a school age program, but then after further research and evaluation on the literature, there was more of a need for an early childhood program, birth, uh, and at that time it was just for preschoolers. Um, and the program started out as the physical activity nutrition program uh, for preschoolers, and then we added food line in the mix to add a food safety component. Um, basically, our mission and vision is dedicated to improving the health of North Carolina uh, children. And most of the time we've done that through a comprehensive approach of nutrition and physical activity and food safety until the last several years where we've really concentrated on an area that seemed to not have as much emphasis or uh, there was more need in the field um, to make things happen, and that is physical activity. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about physical activity and how that um, also kind of helped with the connection with CATCH Global Foundation. Uh, the active kids characters, uh, blue, glide, slide, dart, and swing, kind of carry out our messages and our methods. Um, and, and we've really done a good job over the last uh, 10 plus years to evaluate the program to make sure it's evidence-based and evidence-informed um, as we spread it across North Carolina and across the country. Next slide. Uh, our three milestone goals, um, one is to improve the physical activity and nutrition practices in North Carolina children um, through child care, schools, homes, and communities. Um, and we need to make sure that we're giving them the things that they need in terms of best practices. Uh, second one is providing the best physical activity related resources uh, and professional development. And that's kind of what, what we've always done. The Active Kids is a strong train the trainer program um, that promotes curriculum uh, along with other individual resources uh, and ongoing professional development. And then the third is develop and maintain strong relationships across North Carolina. And through our work with uh, Be Active North Carolina and other collaborative approaches, we've done a really good job in North Carolina of connecting the pieces, connecting organizations, connecting people, uh, and connecting the work being done by those organizations of people. Next slide. Uh, just some, a little bit more about Be Active Kids and kind of the things that we've done over the last 10 plus years. Uh, we, we disseminate a lot of kits similar to the one I'll reference a little bit in um, our discussion about sun safety. Um, but our kits are usually curriculum, uh, other informational resources, newsletters, uh, posters, et cetera, all related to improving the health of young children in mainly child care settings. Uh, we've disseminated over the past 10 years uh, 15,000 kits. Um, we, again, through our Train the Trainer system, have trained 100, uh, have conducted 100 plus Train the Trainer sessions, and this is across North Carolina, which is a fairly uh, large state with a very diverse population and, and uh, environment. Um, we have a, approximately 1,500 uh, trainers, and these are folks that are work in volunteer roles. They either work for an organization like Smart Start, or they might be a child care health consultant, they might work for cooperative extension, they may even be an instructor at a community college. But their role is to actually go out and work with child care providers, uh, elementary school teachers, uh, or anybody really that, that is eight years and younger. Um, with, of those 1,500 uh, trainers, uh, they've held about 750 provider trainings in schools and child care centers across our state. Uh, to train about 10,000 providers for um, preschool teachers. We also, uh, um, in 2010, really branched off from more of a structured curriculum approach and really went on in the other direction to offer more uh, unstructured free play opportunities for young children and organizations. Um, and those are our play events or play initiatives. Um, and you see them listed there, play days, play mobile, and play pods. Uh, and we've facilitated um, over 300 of those in the last um, probably five and a half years, uh, reaching over um, 150,000 children. 
Uh, next slide. And this is the last kind of um, bit of information about North Carolina, this and one more slide. But um, before I even go there, like all of the stuff you've seen and heard, um, it's kind of unique and it builds on the discussion about collaboration. Uh, we're a staff of three people, really two full-time and one part-time person. Um, and we're all program-related folks. So we're always out there in the field. Uh, we're in child care centers. We're in schools. We're at meetings. Um, so it shows to the extent of how much collaboration and teamwork can get the job done in a fairly large state with a fairly small budget and a, a fairly small staff. Uh, North Carolina, as I said earlier, is very, it's a long state, it's very diverse. We have 100 counties and each of those counties work very independently. Um, we are lucky to have an early childhood system called Smart Start that can help spread information across those counties in a more unified way. Um, as we talk a little bit more about sun safety uh, later on, uh, North Carolina has mild winters. Uh, we've got long pleasant periods of spring and fall, and we've got warm summers. So children can be outside uh, almost any time uh, of the year uh, for long periods of time, especially with good quality clothing. Um, you know, the only bad thing might be the pollen, obviously, um, but hopefully that's mostly gone now. Uh, this is, we are also mountain to coast, so we can have children out in the mountain skiing, and we can have children out uh, on the beach um, playing in the water. So when we talk about the things that they do related to health, uh, it's very different, but it, uh, there is also a lot of commonality there. Um, that's, when we talk mountain to coast, we're talking about uh, over 550 miles um, from end to end of the state, which is about a nine hour, a nine hour drive. So you, again, you, we're central, um, kind of in the middle in Wake County. So the three of us drive across our state and work together with partners to get all of that work that you saw earlier completed. Um, and a lot of what we do, again, lately, um, is really related to childhood obesity uh, and, and overweight. Um, so when we talk about North Carolina having a fairly large um, childhood obesity and overweight um, percentage, we're talking about 28% of our children um, are overweight and obese, and they're very they're not getting the recommended 60 minutes of physical activity uh, a day. Next slide. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the active kids does focus on the early childhood um, setting. So when, when we talk about North Carolina's early care and education setting, uh, it's important to know that these children uh, are in a variety of different settings. They might be in a family care home, which is very small and has a variety of age groups. Uh, they may be in a child care center that is regulated um, and has specific groupings of age. Uh, or they also may be in a school setting that could be used, um, either subsidized or unsubsidized. Um, and again, this is we primarily focus on children five and under. But when we talk about needing to collaborate, needing to accomplish a lot of um, milestones um, towards our outcomes, we, you've got to understand the early childhood kind of setting in our state. Um, a lot of it has to do with child care rules and regulations. Uh, we've got over 10 child care rules that specifically relate to to physical activity, and I'm going to focus mostly on that today and not the nutrition aspect. Um, so it, it, it can really alter how child care providers and owners of child care centers and parents really get things done. Um, we also work highly with uh, rating scales, and there's over 32 environmental rating scales that focus primarily on physical activity as well. We do a lot of work uh, in best practice in North Carolina, and we utilize NAPSAC or Go NAPSAC. Um, so we, we really are working with child care centers and schools on 54 best practices that relate to physical activity. Uh, and they're in those eight categories that you see there on your slide. So the time that we provide to them, and, and is, it, is that time available for them, the indoor and outdoor environment, um, when we talk about, we'll talk mainly about the outdoor environment as it relates to uh, sun safety, uh, teacher practices, education and professional development, and policy. 
all of which for us to accomplish that in North Carolina, we do need collaboration like what you're going to hear today. Next slide. So I'm going to go through a couple different pictures now just to kind of get your minds thinking of, you know, why are we doing this? Why does an organization related to physical activity mainly um, or nutrition, why is there going to be a collaboration on a sun safety curriculum? Um, so we look at this picture here. I mean, this is kind of what we're working with and what we're seeing. Next slide. Maybe it's something like this where you live. Next slide. But we'd really like to see it transitioning to more things like this. Next slide. Maybe even something like this. Next slide. Or even something like this. So as we saw, there was a lot of indoor active, uh, indoor uh, pictures that were very sedentary to maybe some more outdoor pictures that are more active. Um, so as we think back to that original um, cartoon, you know, children are more active, like more likely to be active when they are outdoors. But when they are outdoors, there becomes more risk. There becomes more uh, potential for danger. So this picture is a prime example of that. I'm not sure how many parents or child care providers or teachers would just allow their children or students just to climb up here and play. Next slide. Besides just the indoor outdoor and the technology versus nature, we've got some other things going on in society as well. And as you see the child in the left, he's kind of bubble wrap. You know, I wish we had a dialogue where you, we could be going back for on this, but most of the presentations we give across the country, everybody's nodding heads and everybody's saying, I, yeah, I see this happen. I see it happen as a parent and I see it happen as an educator. Um, but this is one issue that plays a role in the opportunities that are provided to young children so that they are able to improve their health. Uh, I don't know if you can read that next slide, but it's... Um, They've got a diagram on the, the bulletin board there in a meeting um, of the Health and Safety Commission of a child that's kind of bubble wrapped. And the, the comment says, well, it doesn't look safe to me at all. Uh, his face is totally exposed to danger. So the question there is kind of like, have we gotten a little out of control on some items that may affect the overall health uh, of our young children? Next slide. Well, the why, uh, I, I think that obviously if you've been following CATCH and you're, you're on this webinar, it, you know, we probably don't have to spend a lot of time on the why. Um, and I've tried to give you a little perspective across um, the globe in terms of why uh, physical activity is important and why the collaboration with MD Anderson and CATCH on a sun safety curriculum was very important to us. I mean, if we look in, in Australia, Australian preschoolers spend about 16% of their time being physically active. And this is Australia, which is, is known for having a fairly strong uh, physical activity, physical education, and outdoor kind of leisure um, philosophy. You look at UK children tend to be less sedentary and more active when in, compared, uh, when in care compared to at home. You see a lot of research and a lot of best practice coming out of the UK as it relates to adventure play, um, outdoor nature play, and just a, a different concept of play in general. Uh, and then the last one, almost three quarters of the total time in child care is sedentary, um, with about 13% of that being light activity and 14% being moderate to vigorous. So again, very small amounts of time that children are moving and moving so that's health enhancing. Next slide. So how did all of this get started from our work where we were to then us contacting and communicating with CATCH? Well, we started kind of seeing that in North Carolina, there was some barriers to, to children and, and adults being physically active. Uh, knowledge, whether it was knowledge of what physical activity truly was or whether it was knowledge of what they were able to offer for their children. Um, it may have been their interest, you know, being outside when it's hot you know, being physically active when it takes a lot of effort, 
tends to really cause a huge barrier in getting that buy-in for physical activity. When we talk about the weather, that was another huge aspect, whether it's too cold, too hot. Well, we North Carolina, most of the time, children can be outside, and the weather is not a big issue. It's just the clothing um, and the adult perceptions. Technology, good or bad, technology is a barrier to physical activity. Um, time is also a barrier, barrier, whether we're structuring our children's activities, whether we're providing more emphasis in certain than other. Uh, but time does um, provide a big barrier. Uh, and time also provides barriers. It um, focuses on how much time children are spending outside, whether it's safe uh, in terms of the sun or whether it's appropriate in terms of activity. Uh, in general, barriers of safety and perceived danger, um, whether we are a risk-adverse society and whether we are putting constraints on children's movement because of this perceived danger and safety versus looking at it through a lens of challenge and, and um, positive risk. Uh, and then lastly, built environments. Um, so whether that's a built environment creating classrooms inside or whether it's an outdoor learning environment that creates a, a robust learning and play experience. And then obviously you could probably think of so many other barriers to physical activity. But these are some of the ones, specifically weather, built environments, um, that really started us thinking about what do we need to do to really eliminate some of those barriers for our child care providers, our teachers, and our parents so that they can get kids outside gardening, playing, climbing trees, et cetera, to be more healthy. Next slide. Well, this is where the solution kind of came in, the collaboration started. So we do a lot of work with a lot of different organizations. And these are just a few that really kind of had us thinking about the outdoor environment, the need for some help in that area. Um, so when we look at the North Carolina Association for the Education of Young Children, or the North Carolina Children and Nature Coalition, or Marvel's Children's Museum. Um, we also do a lot of work with the natural learning environment at NC State and their projects um, related to preventing obesity by design. Uh, track trails um, through the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation, getting kids out on trails. Um, Shape NC, which is through Smart Start um, and Blue Cross Blue Shield North Carolina Foundation, um, which is more of a bigger comprehensive project for childhood obesity in North Carolina. Uh, and then some work with our zoo uh, on playful pedagogy. Well, all of those had a strong outdoor children and connection with nature and spending large amounts of time outdoor. Um, so we said, well, gosh, Catch is kind of releasing something. So we made some good connections with Catch Global Foundation. Uh, and they talked to us about what was happening with the MD Anderson Cancer Center uh, and the development of the Sun Safety curriculum, um, Sun Meetables. And we said, this could really be something that could really empower and educate the folks in North Carolina and be a resource to getting kids outdoors and playing. Next slide. So back in February of last year, we said, OK, let's, let's start the conversation. So um, Duncan Van Dusen and myself had several conversations starting in February about like, what does it look like? What could the active kids be doing? How could we be sharing this through our normal training, the trainer model? How can we be providing, you know, sharing costs? What does this look like? And it took us a while. It took us uh, uh, about a couple, maybe two months to really decide what that might look like. Uh, and then in May, we said, all right, we're going to really start uh, making this happen. So we started recruiting um, centers. And we said, we're going to pilot this through one of the projects that we work with, which is Shape NC. Um, and we said, we're going to offer it to those because the, those centers, child care centers, because they're already doing good work and they really need some other opportunities and resources. Uh, so in May, we recruited those centers. We recruited um, about 16 centers. And we said, let's start offering this program in probably June or July. So we were a little behind the gun um, in terms of, you know, a little late in terms of when we would have really liked to do this. Um, but we'll talk about that as we moved into 2016. So we started our trainings across the state in June uh, and July of 2015. Uh, and we trained 16 child care centers. 
We train roughly 50 classrooms, maybe a little more, uh, in those uh, 16 child care centers, um, reaching roughly 650 children. Uh, and I don't, you probably can't see, I don't know how big your screen is, but if you look at all the orange dots down there on our map, we're, you know, the white space there in the middle, that's where our office is. And again, remember, we're a staff of two and a half. All those stars, those orange stars there, are where we held uh, Sun Beatables training. So we're talking, again, about 180 uh, or 1,800 miles that we kind of spent going across the state, working in these 16 counties to really educate folks on the need for sun safety uh, and how to really get it done and then follow through with it. So August and October, we began to reflect on what was happening. We did some follow-up from these places, got some feedback. Um, and in November and February of last year, uh, November to February, we really began to then work with CATCH um, and MD Anderson on what could be done. How could we revise what the training looked like? How does the, did the materials or curriculum need to be changed? Um, and we provided the feedback to them, and they went ahead and kind of met together as a team and um, created kind of a 2.0 version. Um, and while that was going on, we figured this is working out very well, so we started recruiting more centers. Uh, and we had a lot of demand and interest in it, and we, we secured, so far up until now, we secured four other centers and have done already four, you know, four more trainings um, in about 15 classrooms. Um, so, so from now until the end of the year, we're going to continue to recruit and begin, continue to finish those trainings that we already had scheduled. So, again, this started a, over a year ago. And from a, you know February 2015 to now, you can see those numbers. I think it's it's been a very successful collaboration in terms of seeing change in the early childhood system here in North Carolina as it relates to sun safety practices. Next slide. Uh, the next several slides we're going to go through are just the pictures because I think a pic the picture can tell a thousand words, you know. And again, looking at all that information and text really doesn't really tell you how fun this was, what the teachers got out of this, uh, and what they're saying now. So we'll go through a couple of these slides, um, and, and this is one group we work with. This is, um, this is some of the actual curriculum in practice. So one of the characters for some beatables is Serena. Uh, and she's got the superpower of uh, sunscreen, you can see there in her hand. But the kids then start draw, they start drawing pictures of the characters on their own and telling the teachers more about them. So you can actually see that learning has occurred here as it relates to talking about a character and relating it to a concept. Um, you can see there that the text above the picture that the teacher wrote down for the child was, she's wearing her hat uh, so that she didn't get burnt. Well, that's Hannah, but uh, Hannah's picture may have been to the right. Next slide. Uh, these were uh, pictures done at a um, Spanish immersion preschool uh, where the actual um, children went and said, this is great. We're going like, to kind of trace our bodies and make full-length characters of our own, and we're going to put the, their superpowers into the children's hand that they created. So you'll see the hat, the sunscreen, the sunglasses, um, and so forth. Next slide. Uh, one of the great activities, uh, the good thing about the training with um, some beatables is it's very hands-on. So there's a lot of practice of the activities uh, so that they sink in, that the teachers feel comfortable doing them, and uh, they have fun. So this was one of the activities where the teachers work with the children to make a hat so that they could have a cheap, easy way to be sun safe. Um, and you can tell that it needs a little work, but they're getting there, and, and they continue to fold and to staple and to tie and to tape so that they finally create a nice hat that they can wear outside. Next slide. And again, there's some more pictures um, of the actual characters being 
posted around the room. You also see in the left corner is the there's a map that goes along with it, which helps connect the children to um, the world around them, so that as they go to different places, they learn different concepts. Next slide. And there's more pictures. Next slide. And this is uh, the actual teacher in that preschool room, kind of showing off all our children's lovely work. Next slide. Some more hats. Next slide. These were ones uh, where the, the kids actually created another preschool in Randolph County, um, North Carolina. And so the kids actually made the hats and then they painted them up and made them all nice. And now they sit there on that countertop to be used whenever somebody may have forgotten a hat or just want to wear it outside anyway. Next slide. Uh, this is that same center. You can see they did a really good job of promoting it. So this is in the front of the child care center where children come, uh, children and parents come in. And you can see that there's this promotion, there's this advertisement, there's this um, discussion about what they're doing on a regular basis. Uh, and, and you can see that they can be sun safe school. Next. This was another uh, another center who decided they were going to make a whole uh, bulletin board that talked about the concepts they were learning and also shared that information with their parents, uh, which was one of our best practices that, as it relates to education and um, information dissemination. Next slide. Some more uh, early childhood uh, providers finishing up a training. Next slide. Uh, another center dedicated to the Sun Beatables curriculum. Next slide. Uh, this is one I really like where you begin to see practice um, that is going to be sustainable because now uh, this kind of work that we were doing with the Sun Beatables curriculum really became integrated into their planning. So. Again, I'm not sure you can see about it, but on Tuesday under small group activity, talk about sun safety, characters, and their powers. So they're, they've begun to already integrate this into what they're doing so that it's going to last long term. Next slide. Some more uh, drawings that they kind of got from the concepts and discussion from the lesson. Next slide. Uh, you can see again. This is, this shows a little bit about the the curriculum materials that we with MD Anderson and Catch to kind of um, share and utilize, so that each of these centers got something that was useful without having to uh, break the bank. Uh, and they did a great job of working together in these small groups to accomplish that. And that that was one of the tough things in West Virginia with our work in child care centers. It's very hard to gather large groups of child care providers or teachers in one time. So we had to do a lot of going and meeting them where they were. Um, so going to their center, trying to work after they had already worked, you know, work with them after they had already worked long days and they were still energetic, they were still engaged, um, and they were still enjoyable to be with. So that takes a lot of passion to do that. Next slide. Uh, and there was one in October, um, I didn't mention on the timeline, but in October of 2015, we actually did a site visit. Um, Catch came down, Duncan Van Dusen came down, and we went around to, I think, about four of our child care centers that are implementing the sun safety curriculum and began to talk with the child care providers and teachers, the directors of those centers, the ones that run the centers, and kind of find out how's it going, how's it being used, is it something worthwhile, what do, you, what do you see changes in? What do you see the connection with parents being? Um, so that was very informative, and that helped inform kind of where we were going in the, uh, in the future with the use of the curriculum, the training, and the content. Next slide. And I think this, is a, I think this might be our last one here, but again, it's another fun um, hat-making activity. Next slide. Nope, one more, sorry. Next slide. These are again that same, that's at uh, um, Spanish Immersion, Preschool Spanish for Fun. Next slide. 
Man, I put more pictures than I believe. Next slide. And then this was kind of our this was our starting group here, and this was us outside actually after we just finished a um, a shadow activity where you go out there and you go in the morning and you trace your shadow with some chalk to determine how safe the sun is or how hot the sun is in terms of direction, and then you go back there at the end of the day and do the same thing and compare. And uh, the, the feedback we received was great. Um, a lot of it in the beginning was feedback related to kind of training aspects like can we get this in Spanish? Um, how many days do we need to, how do we implement this? You know, how many days should be implemented? So there were very technical questions. But the, the feedback we're getting now is, is a lot different. It's related to things like, man, this content was well prepared, it was easy to use, it was high quality, and I can't believe we got it for such a great deal. Then the next thing, you know, like the activities were so much fun. So again, after being tired all day, they had fun, and then following up with them after they did it with their children, their children had a ball. So again, I think when the teachers learn in that, in that environment and they are enjoying what they're doing, it's a lot easier to get it kind of um, directed down to the children. Uh, the parent section was a big hit. It helped them spread those messages to the home. Some of them actually took that on to other health-related behaviors. So it may have they may have learned this technique of parent sharing through Sun Beatables, but they then began to use that for other things like nutrition, physical activity, um, or even um, some food safety stuff. Uh, I can't believe how much sunscreen. Uh, we also had a great um, partnership um, for sunscreen. And it does take a lot of sunscreen to coat a child effectively. And uh, that was that threw people off a lot in the discussion about you know, who should be buying the sunscreen, how should it be provided so that everybody gets some. Uh, and then lastly, our kids need to spend more time outdoors playing, but need to be safe and healthy while they do that. Um, and that came a lot from our eastern um, counties where they're right by the coast. They spend a lot of time outside but there's not a lot of shade for them. Next slide. Oh, and then popped up, love the, heart, the uh, Head Start alignment. Next slide. All right, so the next steps here, uh, we're going to continue to work with Catch and MD Anderson to offer it across North Carolina to really make it robust and make it something that's sustainable. Um, typically, that's going to involve training. It's going to involve following up with our centers. Um, what we really want to find out now, though, is as we follow up with the centers and schools are the next three bullets, uh, which is, you know, how are they using this? Are they still using it? Are they using it on a regular basis? Uh, we want to evaluate kind of the, the amount of physical activity levels, indoor and outdoors, and are we seeing changes outdoors now that they're more aware of sun safety, that they're actually utilizing sun safety best practices? Uh, and that's really where we, as um, one of the kind of driving forces behind this collaboration was that we need to find a way to increase physical activity and decrease the barriers of being outside. And then lastly, do we see a change in attitudes between the adults and the children about spending that time outside and being safe? And then lastly, it's to continue to recruit across North Carolina to train more people on sun safety, um, so that they're aware of the dangers of the sun, but also aware of how to kind of use those superpowers um, to really prevent skin cancer. And next slide. And I wanted to, I wanted to kind of throw this one in there to kind of close this out. Is well, so we added another thing onto the teacher's you know to do list, right? So all right, now don't forget the sunblock, stay hydrated, don't breathe the smog, watch out for E. coli warning. Do you have your cell phone? And the kids are like, man, playing outside ain't what it used to be. So again, it's a happy balance of trying to meet people where they are, provide them opportunities to to make a baby step in the right direction, so that they become they begin to make that best practice. Um, meet that best practice. And along the way of meeting the best practice, you're still doing good work. Um, so I want to thank everybody for their time. Uh, hopefully what I've 
kind of provides you today, helped you maybe collaborate in your own way, in your own state, um, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much, Rich, and I'll just ask folks if you've got a question to type them in now um, while we're waiting for those questions to come in. Uh, Rich, I can't believe what you've been able to do in such a short period of time. It's, you know, you talk about the passion that these folks have out in the fields working with the kids, and it clearly comes from the role modelling that you and your staff of two have been able to, uh, to do over, over, the, uh, over the year. You know, you're quite right. We've, if we're going to change the kids' behaviour, we're going to be able to change their environment. And all those uh, wonderful pictures you showed us is, is an example of that. You know, the work that they're actually doing with the characters, putting on the wall, making the hats, and, and lots of smiling. We know if it's not fun, uh, it's certainly not going to get done. I've got a couple of questions here for you. Um, could you elaborate on the play events? Interested to hear uh, what is offered. And this is from Jenny. Sure thing, and again, is is another way of kind of moving outside of this, the, that structured lesson kind of plan um, for for all children, where the teacher has directed. We really moved in another direction, where uh, we started in 2010 promoting something called play days, and it was really a community action based um, opportunity where a parent could do it in their they could do it at their house, and then send some pictures in, or invite some friends from the neighborhood to do it. They could do it at a at a school, instead of field day, they could kind of just have more unstructured free play. Um, they could do it at a child care center. They could do it at a creek. And it kind of blew up from us having to really promote and lead these things the first year to now having each year we typically have about 75 organizations across our state leading their own play dates. Uh, and again, it's it's basically any, any time from a half an hour to, to six hours. Uh, depending on what the resources are available, um, where children are just playing outdoors, they're they're using their motor skills, they're using their dramatic play, they're using their risky play, um, they're being physically active, they may be gardening, um, but again, they're spending a lot of time outdoors with this. And this is a model we grabbed from the UK. Uh, Nickelodeon has also kind of been doing that over the last several years as well, um, but it is it's primarily focused on play events that are not really sports oriented, just freedom kind of for children. Um, and then Playmobil is something that we have which basically brings a bunch of loose parts, not which is non-traditional equipment, so not a lot of balls, but wood and buckets and crazy stuff. We, we bring that out to places, they use it for free, kids play unstructured, put it all back and it goes to a new place across our state um, at no cost for the most part. And then we have play pods, which is that that, uh, that kind of idea, but it's, it's actually put at a center or a school or, or a uh, local park, and then kids, it's just opened by someone, and kids go in and get the loose part, play with it outside, and then put it back. Great. And, and just uh, to, to, to follow up on what you were talking about, Rich, and the response, uh, this this uh, more of a comment, I guess, comes in from Regina Flynn. And Regina's with the uh, National Comprehensive Cancer Control Program um, and saying here, we, you know, we just offered this unbeatables training at 38 centres in New Hampshire. And the feedback from the early care and educational staff was very, very positive. Uh, more than one person said it was the best training they'd ever been to. So, so that's great. Uh, they have a coordinator. She's, she's mentioning here through this uh, program, they have a coordinator in every state and reaches out to them to uh, uh, consider uh, a collaboration here similar to the one that you're doing. Thanks, Regina. I think, Rich. Um, and I will say with, with, with that concept there as well, I mean, we saw that. We saw them really enjoying it because they were getting a lot of other initiatives asking them to be outside for either nutrition reasons or bringing the outdoor learning, you know, the, the learning aspects of the curriculum outdoors. So they, again, they were they were having to spend more time outdoors based on our regulations and our our standards. So it was it was very welcoming to them to say, "Wow, now I can keep them safe while they are outdoors." Great. One of the things, too, we've heard a lot, too, and all the collaboration that goes on and, and, and with your staff, that that's a must, and that's communication. And you talked about getting those messages back to the parents. 
How were you able to do that? And, and how did the parents respond to that? Uh, we were mostly, you know, out of the picture on that. I mean, that was one of those things where the the, the curriculum did that work for the most part. So um, the way that MD Anderson kind of set up the curriculum with Catch, each, each of those lessons pretty much has a parent connection piece. So it, it's really not a lot of work for the teacher uh, or child care provider. It's take this already laminated, you know, just print it out, cut it up, put it in the cubby, put it in the book bag, and send it home. Uh, and from what we've heard, you know, from the preliminary findings was that it was making the teacher's job a lot easier and they were actually seeing more feedback and more support for things, again, like, wow, we, you know, we used to always buy the sunscreen, but I sent home this, you know, or I put a stamp maybe on the, the kid's paper or something that had uh, Serena sunscreen, which meant bring some sunscreen in if you can. So centers were paying for that out of their budget, so now parents brought that in on their own. Um, and then they were saying, yeah, this is more safe. And then you'd have the kids talk a little bit to some of the centers, uh, their teachers, and, and they would say, yeah, my mom bought me a new hat I can wear outside. And now they're bringing that hat with them to school. So those messages, the good thing is most of that's already in the Sun Beatles curriculum. So again, we didn't have to do a lot of work in terms of parent connection. We're just about out of time, mate, but I wanted to thank you so much. You know, over the time, the 10 years with your Be Active Kids program, uh, the support of Blue Cross Blue Shield, the 150,000 kids in 100 counties uh, that you're impacting, it's fantastic and it's clear. You know, I always look at how do we know it's working? Well, it's definitely observable and from what you've shown us today, uh, that, that's making a big difference. So I want to thank you so much um, for joining us today and, and spending the time and sharing uh, all, those, all those good things. Uh, next month, um, uh, we're in for another treat on May the 24th at 11 a.m., Jeff Franklin from uh, the Southern Illinois University School of Medicine and Phyllis Wood from the Egyptian Health Department will discuss their efforts to create, support and sustain healthy environments in preschool, school and after school settings in Southern Illinois. Uh, this initiative impacts over 21,000 students in their catch schools. Uh, so for today, and on behalf of, thanks again, Rich, um, and the whole CATCH team and Michael and Susan Dell Center for Healthy Living. Uh, bye for now and take care. Thank you.